Welcome to 99th Monkey Liberty News for Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014. The first article that I'm looking at today is from RT. U.S. Intel employees face new consequences for speaking to media. They have established some new regulations pertaining to people who work for intelligence agencies. Members of the United States intelligence community must now operate within the boundaries of a new media policy as contact with a journalist without prior approval can now be considered a fireable offense, their boss said on Sunday. So I hate to think, you know, what if, what if you're married to a, a journalist? Uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess maybe you have approval for that, and I'm, I'm not too sure. But um, this, is, this is, seems like they're very concerned about people in the intelligence community telling the truth about what's going on there. And I read or heard somewhere this morning that the, a lot of leaks, now any leak that comes out is called a Snowden leak. It's just kind of a, a cover that they all use. Um, that, you know, it's, they're true leaks, but they come from other sources. And just to protect the source, they're, they're called a Snowden leak. From Western journalism, liberals announced plan to purge Christians. And I, I, there's another story this morning. I don't have a link for the. It seems kind of related to me. Just the fact that the establishment is really starting to feel threatened, I believe, uh, by Christians, by people who seek the truth, people who are, are disseminating the truth. And the, the Clinton Library shows that they, new do documents that are recently opened up or released are showing that in the 90s, the Clintons were very concerned about people getting more information and um, just beginning to spread the truth as we are doing. And I think that's one of the great threats uh, about Christians is that Christians do tend to seek the truth. And, you know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It's a very high priority for Christians. So uh, this article from Western journalism states that Christians are becoming a focus of uh, people that, you know, that don't like truth, I guess. They were always deadly serious about criminalizing Christianity and killing free speech, but now the American left has stopped pretending otherwise. In a recent column titled, Why Are They Called Homo Fascists? Here's Why, I wrote that progressive Christian-hating fascists but I repeat myself, are hell-bent on criminalizing Christianity and pushing to the fringes anyone who publicly acknowledges natural human sexuality and the age-old immutable institution of legitimate marriage as created by God. Uh, again, it, it, this is, there's, there's a threat here. There's a perceived threat, and, you know, it's not like we're going out and sniffing out people that don't agree with us and and uh, forcing things on them. I, I, at this point, uh, that it's a reverse. They are attacking us. This is an interesting video that was published yesterday. The central bankers are pushing war to cover up the economic collapse. This uh, makes a lot of sense, and I, I didn't mention this issue on Thursday or Friday. I wasn't fully aware of it until Friday, that uh, gold and silver were, the prices on the exchanges were frozen Thursday and Friday. And there, there's just, there's funny business going on. If you if you're following the markets, you just see inconsistencies. Or even if you reach zero hedge, of course, which uh, can catch you up quickly to what's going on with the American economy and the world economy, for that matter. But yeah, I, th I think that they're trying to divert our focus away from the truly significant issues. Not that not that war is not significant, but uh, they're 
they want a war to distract people. Hopefully they won't get a war, but, you know, failing getting a war, they just talk a lot about war and saber rattle all the time. And I often remember, I, and I'm not sure what they were trying to distract us from, but months ago, actually probably sometime last year, there was all that bl bluster about, no, oh, North Korea has nukes aimed at the West Coast. And, you know, that was all stirred up for just a short period of time and then quietly went away. Well, that, that wasn't that wasn't a real threat. That wasn't a genuine problem or issue. Uh, for anybody who has never watched w the movie Wag the Dog, I sincerely recommend that you do watch that movie. And, and uh, it's fiction, yes, but Stephen King said that fiction is the truth inside a lie. And there's a lot of truth in that movie, and you can certainly learn a lot about why you read what you do in the news and uh, why some of these really significant issues go unnoticed by them. From the Washington Times, IRS revokes conservative groups tax-exempt status over anti-Clinton statements. What is that? I will uh, I'll just leave that there. That that's the story. That's what's happening, and the IRS has to be stopped. I mean, you know, we can stop it just by not filling out forms and not telling them all the secrets about our lives. From the Washington Examiner, Obama taps W. Neil Eggleston for White House counsel. This was kind of interesting. He uh, represented the Clintons during Whitewater, and he also uh, was part of the council team for uh, Iran Contra. So he's he knows he 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 knows how to handle scandals, and uh, he knows how to make people who are as crooked as the day is long, appear to be righteous. Hopefully he will fail this time, but I'm, I'm wondering what kind of issues uh, they're preparing, the White House is preparing to address. And uh, hopefully, you know, we constantly hear these reports that there are going to be arrests and trials, and it never happens. Um, Maybe this is kind of an indication that, that they are preparing uh, a defense for Obama because that's the kind of experience this attorney has. From Blacklisted News, Obama ordered to divulge legal basis for killing Americans with drones. Well, that's just one small problem, not small really, but uh, one issue among many issues. This happened a while ago. This was March 28th, uh, but it, it, it just caught my, attracted my notice today, and I wanted to mention it. New BP oil spill toxicity shores of Lake Michigan, EPA, FDA, Supreme Court financial ties, big business. Yeah, so there was a, there was a, a BP oil spill in Lake Michigan. Uh, oil giant BP has caused yet another oil spill in a crucial waterway this week following an increase in tar sands refining at its Indiana plant on the shores of Lake Michigan. BP notified the federal government's National Response Center around 5 p.m. Monday, and this was again March 28th, that its whiting refinery was leaking, in, leaking oil into the lake, which is the source of drinking water for 7 million people in nearby Chicago due to a malfunction in the refinery's cooling water system. Well, you know, <laughs> if, I, if I were selling uh, water purification systems, <laughs> this would certainly be an opportunity for me to mention them. Uh, hopefully you all have good water filters, but, you know, more and more there are these just affronts, really, to... Uh, our sources of clean water. 
those spills in West Virginia a little while ago of uh, something having to do with the coal industry. Um, these people are, I, I, I want to say they're careless. They, you know, our lives are, we, where we, we completely are dependent on water for life and uh, they're, they're harming sources of water. From the Hollywood Reporter, Brian Singer, accuser, names three Hollywood insiders in new sex abuse lawsuits. And I saw an article about, uh, I think it's a, a related incident. Some people had, there's a show that's, uh, or a channel maybe that's called Den, D-E-N, and um, it's basically gay porn. I think you can watch it on your television. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but uh, there have been allegations that these, you know, the, some of these men who have been producing these shows were having sexual relations with boys of, you know, 14, 15 years old. And uh, this is, so this is, I, I believe this was a related scandal, but I, I think some, there's, there's some things in common here, but I, I, at a quick research, I couldn't find the other article. And this on its own is certainly, it's almost overwhelming. I mean, I, I think I'm finding it difficult to talk about this. And we kind of know some of these, these organizations are not staffed by caring nurturers. I mean, they might have them in their staff, but that's not who's at the helm. Jeff Herman, the lawyer representing the man accusing Brian Singer of sexual abuse, announced Monday that he has filed three additional sex abuse lawsuits against prolific TV exec Garth Ancier, former Disney TV president David Newman, and a Broadway producer Gary Goddard. Uh, Ancier is a veteran programmer who oversaw the launch of Fox Television and the CW and also served as president of BBC Worldwide America. He created the Ricky Lake Show and at Fox TV 21 Jump Street and In Living Color. Um, these are, you know, Ricky Lake, that was a talk show, but 21 Jump Street and In Living Color, they were... Um, they were shows for young people. And, you know, here we have uh, people programming for young audiences. And uh, they have, they've been, they, they have participated in this, this kind of behavior. And uh, Newman is the former president of Disney TV and also worked as chief programming officer for CNN. Uh, you know, again, these, these, these people are producing programs. These people are, are creating the flow that is, uh, that most young people encounter as they're growing up. Children, uh, president of Disney TV. So, man, if, if you let your kids watch TV, I mean, we're not strict no TV, uh, but it's important to filter. It's very important to filter. And thank you, Netflix, for making it so easy to find quality programming uh, that, that, you know, we're not forced to just be spoon-fed by whatever somebody decides to put on. From 2012, What's the Real Truth? David Wilcock responds on Ben Fulford's blog to the Bundy standoff. And I, I mentioned Fulford's blog yesterday. And uh, I think David Wilcock wrote this as a comment, although I haven't seen it on uh, Fulford's website. But uh, this is, I found this very encouraging. Uh, and I think that you will too. There's he, he, David Wilcock just believes that uh, if the feds do move on the Bundy Ranch, it is only going to speed up the mass arrests and uh, 
It's great, great insight from David Wilcock, as always, and very encouraging. From Mercy Triumphs, uh, Fritz Springmeier wrote Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise by Fritz Springmeier. And this is kind of uh, an intros introspective here. It's meant to get us to uh, consider ourselves. And I guess it would be appropriate to say to, you know, judge ourselves, uh, to look inside and, and, find out why we have the problems that we have, not for condemnation, uh, but so that, we can, so that we can repent and change and find healing and move ahead. And this is just some encouragement along those lines. Always a lot of great in-depth information from Fritz. And for our final a bit of good news. No, you might, at first glance, this might not seem like good news, but from Blacklisted News, Southern Poverty Law Center blames right wing conspiracy theorists for ruining Agenda 21. Hey guys, I just want to say congratulations. Uh, you've ruined Agenda 21. So, good news, right? <laughs> Thank you for tuning in for today's 99th Monkey Liberty News. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hoping that you will love one another. Take care. Uh, keep ruining evil plans <laughs> to dominate the world. And uh, insist on liberty by enforcing the Bill of Rights. <laughs>